Hello friends. Uh, today we are also going to discuss this uh, wedge and a block problem with the concept of a pseudo force. We will consider various cases and try to understand what this pseudo force is all about in this particular situation. All the surfaces are frictionless. There is no friction. This surface is smooth. This is a wedge of block uh, of mass capital M, and this is a small block of mass small m. Let us try to understand the first case where the wedge is fixed. The wedge is fixed. It is not moving. It is stationary. Of course, when the wedge is fixed, the block is only going to slide down from here in the downward direction. Let us try to understand the various forces which are going to act on this block. I am going to do it from the basics. So let us see the free body diagram of this block. For the sake of convenience, let me take this block somewhere in between. and draw all the forces that are acting on this block. The first force that is acting is the weight of the block Mg which is vertically downwards and whenever two surfaces are in contact there is a normal reaction between the two surfaces. So the wedge exerts a normal reaction N at the right angles to the line of contact. take this angle as theta. If this angle is theta, this angle also becomes theta. Let us understand how. This particular line is lifted by 90 degrees. That gives you the vertical line along which Mg is acting. And this particular line is again lifted by 90 degrees. So what I am doing is, suppose the angle between these two surfaces is theta. This line is lifted by 90 degrees. This line is also lifted by 90 degree. The angle between them will remain same. In this way, we can understand that if this angle is theta, this is also theta. It can also be proved by geometry by drawing perpendiculars, but this is the simplest approach. This is the vertical opposite angle theta. And now, let me resolve Mg. One component is along the line, which is Mg cos theta and the other component along the incline is mg sin theta. As the block is not jumping in this direction, there is an equilibrium. So n must balance mg cos theta. And the force that supplies the necessary movement in the downward direction is mg sin theta. That is the only force acting. According to the DRMS principle, therefore, we have mg sin theta is equal to m into a and that gives me a downward acceleration as g sin theta. This is the situation where the wedge is fixed and the block is sliding down the wedge. The acceleration of the block is given by g sin theta. Now we are going to consider two cases. In the first case, I will push this wedge to the right and let us see what happens to the acceleration of this block. In another case, I am simply letting the block slide down and then we will see what happens to the wedge. So let us consider case 1. Where the wedge has a forward acceleration A or it is pulled to the right with an acceleration A. Now think about it. When this wedge is pushed to the right with an acceleration A, what will happen to the acceleration of this block? Will it remain G sin theta now? No. Because along with the block, the wedge is also moving to the right. Will this speed up the block in the downward direction or will it reduce the speed? Let us think about it and spotter about it. When you are moving the wedge to the right, the actual speed of the block or acceleration of the block here is going to decrease. 
and it will take a longer time to come down. You can do this experiment at home and you can see that if there is a block and if you push it with enough force, in fact, at one particular value of force, the block will remain stationary. Let us understand how this happens. And here comes the concept of a pseudo force. Imagine a situation which I am telling you. Already I am discussing, I am already defining the situation for you and you think from the point of view of the given situation. There is an acceleration which is given to the lower wedge. And the situation is that the block remains stationary. The block does not move. It means the small block as well as the wedge, both of them are moving with the same acceleration. Now comes the concept of a pseudo force. Imagine two people, one person like me who is standing on the ground and looking at the situation and suppose you are sitting on this block or you yourself are sliding down as a block is sliding down. As you are remaining stationary, you will say that no force is acting on me because I am stationary. The block is stationary on the edge. You will feel that no force is acting on you and that is why you are stationary. But what is my argument? I am standing here. My argument is that you as well as the wedge, both of you are moving with an acceleration A towards right. How are you saying that you are stationary because no force is acting on you? So in order to explain why this block is stationary, we have to understand the concept of a pseudo force. A pseudo force is considered only in a non-inertial frame of reference. My frame of reference as I am standing here is inertial, but as you are sliding down or you are sitting on the block, your frame of reference is non-inertial. In order to explain why you are stationary, even though the acceleration A is acting on you, you have to consider a pseudo force which is acting in the opposite direction on you. And that pseudo force acting, as the wedge is moving to the right, the pseudo force is acting on the block to the left. Now I can say that since the pseudo force is acting to the left, it is balancing the actual force to the right and that is why I am stationary. So this is the concept of a pseudo force which has to be considered only in a non-inertial frame of reference. Now let us consider the free body diagram of this block. Now there is a force G sin theta which is acting on it as we have seen in the previous example. In addition to that, if you consider this as theta, the acceleration here is going to be A cos theta. The moment G sin theta and A cos theta become equal, we will say that the block will remain stationary, it will not move. So what is the acceleration A in terms of theta for the block to remain stationary? A cos theta which is upward must be balanced by G sin theta which is downwards and the acceleration A is given by G tan theta. If we move this block to the right with an acceleration g tan theta, ultimately it will result into a situation where this particular block will remain stationary. If this particular value of A is less than g tan theta, then the block will slide down but it will have less acceleration. Because previously when the block was stationary, its acceleration was only g sin theta. Now its acceleration is g sin theta minus a plus theta. So this block now will take a longer time to slide down. Now we are going to consider exactly the opposite space when this wedge is moving to the left. Now we are not going to apply any acceleration anywhere. All the surfaces are smooth and frictionless. The wedge is movable, it is not stationary. No external force is attached to this particular wedge. I am simply having a block and letting it slide down. As the block slides down to the right, the wedge will move to the left. So now let me consider the free body diagram of this block and let me take it here for the sake of understanding. Suppose A is the acceleration of the wedge to the left. 
acceleration of the block is g sin theta in absence of moment of the wedge. But as the wedge is moving to the left, we have to apply a pseudo force, which is exactly opposite to this to the right. As this angle is theta, this is also theta. There are corresponding angles, and now the component of a along the line will be a cos theta. So the net acceleration will be given by g sin theta plus a cos theta. As you are sitting on this particular wedge, this is the acceleration that you will feel in a non-inertial frame of reference. And this is nothing but the relative acceleration of this block with respect to the wedge. Why? Because this is the acceleration of the block as you are sitting on the block relative to the wedge. So this is the acceleration of the block relative to the wedge as seen by sitting on the block. So now we can conclude if the wedge is stationary, it will move down with g sin theta. That is case one. Stationary bit G sin theta, there is no acceleration. If the wedge is moving to the right, a pseudo force will act to the left, and then the net acceleration here will be G sin theta minus A cos theta. And the last case is the wedge is moving to the left, the pseudo force will act to the right and the net force will be g sin theta plus a cos theta.